Oops, I got to start the recording. I know our regular attendees are expecting Christine, and that's whose name is up here, but this is Leanne Roth. I'm also with the Alliance, and Christine is out advocating for people's rights across the state today, so I get to, um, I get to moderate this webinar. And with me, I have Nancy Ward. Nancy is an internationally known self-advocate who lives in Oklahoma, uh, in Oklahoma City. And Nancy is one of the creators of Self-Advocates Becoming Empowered's Voter Project. And so she is the co-director of that project, and she's been working with that project since uh, 2000 is when it started. And also with us, we have Cheryl Jansen. Cheryl is the director of public policy here in Illinois for Equip for Equality. Equip for Equality is Illinois' protection and advocacy organization. And what they do is stand up for the rights of people with disabilities. If you hear anything about all the lawsuits happening in Illinois so that providers get paid, um, Equip for Equality does that. They help people with guardianship issues. They also help, um, they also work on voting rights and protecting the rights of people with disabilities when they vote. And so let's welcome Nancy and Cheryl. Welcome, you guys. Thank you, Leah. Yes, we're, we're clapping. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, first up, Nancy's going to talk to us a little bit as soon as Leanne advances the slide. There we go. Okay. So, SAGE Voter Project was started so people with disabilities could um, vote and they understood their rights and responsibilities. And what we did is we developed a toolkit that uses people, um, uses pictures so that <clears throat> people who don't necessarily know how to read can um, still participate in the training. And it also teaches you to register because when two of my friends and I would go around the country, we would talk to people with disabilities and they would have all kinds of questions. And so that's why the toolkit was developed. And it was developed by self-advocates for um, self-advocates. So it's a peer training, which I really like a lot. And it also teaches you about where you can vote because um, Tia, my friend Tia and I and people from Illinois probably know Tia. Um, Tia moved upstairs in her apartment building and that put her in a different precinct. So she didn't get to um, vote and so what she had to do is use a provincial, the provincial ballot and the same thing happened to me, me but I moved across the street and I also had to use a provincial ballot when um, they told me that we weren't registered. And then things that might get in your way might be that staff don't want to take you. They don't think that you know how to vote. Um, I think people with disabilities understand the issues and the candidates, how the candidates feel about things because I think we take the time to um, listen and to understand. So I think that we're more educated than a lot of people. And the screen just went blank. Sorry guys.
and how to build connections across local and state agencies. So one of the ways that this toolkit is taught is that you have to have um, the protection and advocacy organization um, be a partner with you because um, we're supposed to provide technical assistance to the PNAs. And um, so it's a way to learn about each other and to build a connection in your community. And we're getting ready to do the distance training <clears throat> for 2016 if people would be interested in um, getting information about that. Um, you could just go um, to the govoter.org website and get information for, for all the staff. And how has voting made a difference in the lives of people with disabilities? Well, the way it's made a difference in my life is that, um, like a lot of people who um, register to vote when they're young, they're going to vote the same way that their parents voted, and that is what I did. And so um, when I learned about the different candidates and learned about the different parties and the way they believe, I changed parties. And my mom um, told me, because I changed parties, that my grandfather would roll over in his grave if he had known that I did that. Um, and another way that um, it's helped me is in like 2010, we um, like those. had um, the Crimson University help us to do the um, voting, the elections of our officers. And so by having that equipment, I now don't need anybody to go with me. So since 2010, I haven't had anybody go with me to be able to vote. And um, I'm going to be 65 this year, so that's a big deal in my life. And these are different things that you can um, vote on. City council members, county commissioners, school board, governor, senator, and president are just some of the things that you could vote on. And I'm sure that you guys have done all this. And one of the things that is very cool is you have the most control over things when you do local, when you vote locally. So don't think that just voting in the presidential elections is what you need to do. You do have um, more say over local issues. Thank you, Leanne. And then this is just who can register to vote. You must be 18, a resident in your community, and live in your state for, in Illinois, what is it, Leanne? I was just going to ask Cheryl. I think she talks about that in a later screen. Is that right, Cheryl? Um, no, I don't, but it is 30 days, and it's not that you have to live, well, obviously you have to live in the state, but you have to actually live in the precinct where you would vote for at least 30 days. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. 
Mm -hmm. And you must be a citizen of the United States. And um, you don't have to be able to read or write or be able to use the voting machines. Do you guys think that that's right? I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Because now with Hava, it's been made accessible to us. Yep, and Hava is, is the Help America Vote Act. And in Illinois, um, Cheryl actually told me this about six months ago. We were on a call, and she mentioned that people in Illinois who have guardians do not have to have guardian permission to register to vote. And do you know that I have worked with people with disabilities in Illinois since 2000, and I did not know that. And so where I used to work, we would register people to vote and we would always call the guardians for permission. And sometimes there were guardians who said no, people could not register to vote. And so when I found out that they didn't need guardian permission, I have been telling that to everybody um, because I was amazed and I was very embarrassed that I did not know that. So I thought, hmm, if I don't know that, I wonder if there's other people who don't know that too. So now we're gonna hear from Cheryl on all the new stuff, all the new laws that are gonna help people vote here in Illinois. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm really, really enthused and excited to talk with you today about voting. Um, I'm sure you've all been seeing and hearing uh, candidates who are running for president next year uh, on television and in the news. And it's, it's really, really important that we all not only register to vote, but that we then get out to vote. Um, voting is a, a basic right of all United States citizens. As, as Nancy has indicated. And so we choose the people who pass laws and make decisions and set policies for our communities and our state and our country by our vote. So I really can't um, say enough how important it is for us to register and to vote. Think about it this way. Um, if these issues are important to you, choosing where you live, having accessible, affordable housing, having more opportunities to work, um, better transportation, better health care, more spending on the services and supports that you need, and protecting the rights you have under the Americans with Disabilities Act, then it is really, really important that you register to vote and you get out to vote. So I wanted to talk today about some changes in Illinois laws that give us more opportunities to, uh, to vote. Um, and both we, have, um, we are now able to um, choose more times and places that we can vote, which is really great. So one of the things that's, that's newer here is something called election day registration and voting. And so there, there is a voter registration deadline here in the state, um, and it ends a certain period of time before the election. But you know, it that also meant that if you missed that deadline, then you didn't have the opportunity to register and to vote. And so they made changes in the law, so you 
literally can vote right up through election day. Not only vote, but register to vote. And so the process for this is called grace period registration and voting. And you can not only register to vote, but if, as Nancy had talked about, you move and have a change of address, you can also do that um, during grace period. And so now, you can register and vote or change your address at your local election authority. And for most people, your local election authority is the county clerk. Um, in some larger cities like Chicago and Bloomington, they have something called a board of election commissioners. But for most of us, your county clerk is your election authority. You can also uh, register and vote at any early voting site beginning 15 days before Election Day. And if you don't know where your early voting site is, then you should contact your local election authority and they can tell you where you can go um, for early voting. And then the best part of this change in the law is that you can actually register to vote and vote at your polling place on election day. So really, nobody should have to miss the opportunity to vote because you can do it right up to and during election day. So that's a really great and important change in the law. We have had um, something called early voting in Illinois uh, for a number of years. And it lets people who are registered to vote um, vote before Election Day by going to an early voting site. And as I just mentioned, you know, just contact your election authority if you don't know where those early voting sites are. But what the law did change was make the time that you can do early voting longer than it used to be. So it starts now 40 days before Election Day, and it lasts until and during the day before Election Day. Also, the hours that you can early vote um, are now longer. So during the 15 days before Election Day, early voting sites have to be open from 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the evening or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. And so your election authority decides which of those eight-hour periods they will have early voting. And during the eight, eight days before the election day, then the hours are, are increased. So then you can vote from 8.30 in the morning till 7 o'clock at night, or 9 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock on weekdays. And they also have early voting available from 9 a.m. to noon on Saturdays and holidays. And 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sundays. So during that eight-day period, you, you literally can go to vote any day of the week and have an opportunity. So that is also very important. Wow, Cheryl, it sounds like they are trying to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to exercise their right to vote. That is so, so true, to make it easy and flexible and more convenient because you have more choices than you've ever had about where you go to vote and when you vote, which is terrific. So another thing I would like to talk about is something that used to be called absentee voting. And absentee voting is not a new thing. Um, it's been around for quite a long time. Um, now we call it vote by mail. Um, what did change within the last few years is that now anyone can vote by mail. 
before you had to have a reason or excuse to vote by mail, and that is no longer the law. So if you want to vote by mail, you have to ask for a ballot from your election authority, and you can do that either by going into the office of your election authority or by mail, and then you will receive a ballot from the election authority, and after you have voted your ballot, you have to return it to the election authority. And again, you can either do this in person by taking it into your election authority, or you can mail it. What the new law also does is that it lets you decide if you would like another person to return your ballot for you. So if for some reason you are not able to, um, you can choose another person to do it for you, and they will have to sign um, something on the envelope that's used to return the ballot, uh, and you will too, showing who it is that you have chosen to do this for you. Um, so that gives you, you know, even more, another option. Um, another thing that, that's great now is that if you're 17 years old on the day of a primary election and you meet all the other requirements to vote, meaning you're a citizen of the United States and you've lived in your precinct for at least 30 days, then you can vote at the primary as long as you'll be 18 years old on the date of the general election that comes right after the primary election. So this, again, is something that increases the ability of people to vote. In the last year or so, um, Illinois also added online voter registration. So now you can register to vote on the internet using your computer. And you'll see on the screen um, that there is the, the website address for where you can go to do this. And there's a couple of things you have to have if you want to uh, register to vote online. One is you have to have um, a valid email address. The other is that you have to provide either a valid driver's license number or a state ID card number. So if this is something that you want to do and you don't have one of those forms of identification, then you will need to go and get one of those um, so you can take advantage of, of this option. And just as you can register to vote online, you can also check on um, your voter registration status on the internet. Um, and again, um, you'll see the, the, the web address for where you can go to check that. And when you when you go to that website, you click on the link that says registration and polling place information, and then it will walk you through the process so that you can check to see if you are now registered to vote. One other thing that I'd like to talk about that, that I, there is not a slide about is that um, the law also has been changed so that there is still another place that you can go to vote. And so if your election authority has a public university, a public college in their area, then they have to provide grace period registration and voting at the student union of that university. And this is in addition to any other place um, that you can go to register uh, and to vote. And you don't need to be a student of this university to do so. This is open to anyone who uh, lives in the area um, of that public university or college. So 
under this new law, um, here are the public universities that you can go to to do grace period registration and voting. Uh, the University of Illinois, Southern Illinois University, Eastern Illinois University, Illinois State University, Northern Illinois University, Western Illinois University, and Northeastern Illinois University. So again, we have more options about when and where we can go to vote. And in case I, I did not mention it before, if you do the grace period registration and voting, what, what you'll be doing is registering to vote and voting at the same time. And if you use this process, then you can't go to your polling place to vote on election day. It's all done at the same time. So a lot of changes that are making it easier and better um, for people to exercise their, their right to vote. And Cheryl, if somebody goes to a, uh, if they go to vote and they're the poll worker where they vote, um, the, the person who works there, if they don't understand that people with disabilities have a right to vote, um, is there anything they can do about that? Well, I, I think one thing that you can do, um, if you're having problems when you go to vote, you can contact your election authority and tell them um, what is going on. You can also um, report it to the Illinois State Board of Elections. And um, you can also call Equip for Equality because we have what we call the um, Election Day Helpline on every primary and general election. And so if you're a voter with a disability and you're um, having uh, a problem when you're going to vote, um, you can call us and we will then try to contact um, the right person to try and fix whatever the issue is while you're still there. Uh, of course, this is, this is on election day. This is not true um, on, on other days, but we are available by phone um, from 7 in the morning until six, excuse me, 6 in the morning until 7 at night, which is when the polls open and close. Um, so, you know, we can be a resource to you if, you if you have any kind of problem. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And Nancy, can you hear me? We, we were all muted, so I'm going to give her a chance to unmute herself. Nancy talked a little bit about... Wait, attendee is self-muted. Okay, so she's going to unmute herself. Um, we talked. Nancy talked a little bit about uh, the self-advocates becoming empowered vote toolkit and what is in it. But um, the Voter Project has a website called GoVoter.org, and the whole toolkit can be downloaded for free and you can go through it at your own pace um, within your organizations. And, or um, like she said, what, what uh, VOTE is doing this year, um, we have for the last two years, VOTE has done distance trainings for the whole state for the self-advocacy groups. And so um, the Alliance is talking to um, the VOTE team about maybe us be the the alliance getting a group together to work with Equip for Equality to train people in Illinois because um, and when we're at Speak Up Speak Out we are going to present uh, some of the uh, some of this toolkit at Speak Up Speak Out so that people can see how it's used and learn about voting. So uh, do, are, are there any questions? that we could answer that you could you can type in questions to the chat I know you can't um, I know you're you don't have a speaker but you can type in questions and our guests can answer them 
and since Christine is not here, I'm. It's taken me a little while, a little bit longer to find the questions. Okay, uh, we don't have any questions yet. Cheryl, is there anything you'd like to say to wrap us up? Or um, no, other than I'm just going to repeat what I've already said is that it is so so important that every one of us is registered to vote and actually votes. And so um, if you're not already registered, go and do that and then make sure that you follow through and um, you vote in the, the primary and the general elections. Um, it's just, uh, there, there's a saying actually by um, Justin Dart, and you know Justin Dart um, is a man who was a, a great, um, self-advocate and was um, very involved in the movement for community integration for people with disabilities and the um, ability of, of people with disabilities to make choices and decisions about their own lives. And one thing that Justin Dart um, used to say is that vote as if your life depends on it because it does. And, and I think I think that says it all. <laughs> yes, it absolutely does. And I know uh, I know that Equip for Equality has people who are who can register people to vote, and they'll actually come out to your organization and do a voter registration drive. And that is absolutely true. And we have um, what are called deputy register, registrars in every office. We have you know, offices in Moline, Springfield, Carbondale, and Chicago. And we are happy to go out. Um, if you would like to have a, a voter registration drive, just let me know that. Contact me, and we will be happy to set it up. Leanne, I'm back on. Oh, hey, there she is. Do you have any last words there, Nance? Um, well, the one thing that I wanted to say is that I'm going to give you guys two opportunities, and they've been talking about one of them, which is the long-distance training. And then also, we're developing a survey that's going to talk about um, people with disabilities experiences in voting so that would be another way that you guys could um, participate with us if that was what you wanted to do and then um, just that thank you for allowing us to um, share our thoughts and views with you guys because I really do believe that people with disabilities are the best examples, you know, can give the best examples for themselves. So I encourage you guys to get out there and vote. Okay, thank you so much, Cheryl and Nancy. And Cheryl, we will see you at Speak Up, Speak Out next week. I, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you, everyone, for having us. Okay, thanks. Bye.